Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear awardees, it is my pleasure to address you on the occasion of the 2017 Freedom Awards ceremony of the Atlantic Council. I wish I could be able to join you in person, especially since this event strongly focuses on the global humanitarian causes, which is a subject very close to my heart. I would like to take this opportunity to pay special tribute to the Catrombon family and to celebrate the work of Moas. I have known the Catrombon family, Regine and Chris, since they have set up Moas. Since 2013, Moas has saved the lives of thousands of individuals and families attempting to cross the Mediterranean Sea in search of a better life. Thanks to the efforts of Moas, over 30,000 people in the central Mediterranean have been rescued and offered effective support. Dear Chris and Regina, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you wholeheartedly and publicly for putting so much energy and passion together with your team to help in this global humanitarian challenge. As we consider the numbers of people currently at risk, let us also remember that the International Organization for Migration estimates that last year alone, one in 29 migrants and refugees died while attempting to cross the central Mediterranean. This truly bears testimony to the remarkable work carried out by Regina and Chris Catrombo in saving lives through MOAS. I believe it is essential for us to keep emphasizing at a time when the world is facing increasing uncertainties that the complex phenomenon of human migration is fundamentally a phenomenon about people. It is about the women, the men, and the children whose lives are uprooted, whose livelihoods are disrupted, and whose dignity is compromised. The well-being of vulnerable people fleeing situations of violence and precarity should be a top priority on our, our national agendas and also the global agenda. I also believe that we must work together, fostering synergy between national and international authorities, civil society activists, such as the Catrombone family and other stakeholders. We must have one voice emphasizing the need for legislation and policies that are driven by our shared duty to safeguard universal human rights and fundamental freedoms of each and every member of our human family. In conclusion, let me say that I augur continuing success to the dedicated team at MOAS under the leadership of Chris and Regina Catrombo and their collaborators. I can think of no more deserving recipients than the Catrombo family of this distinguished award. I'm confident that Regina and Chris Catrombo will continue to inspire us with all their passion and dedication to safeguard the dignity of the vulnerable, to protect the lives of those in need, and to give reassurance and hope for the future. Dear Regina and Chris, I'm truly proud of you. Thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, to accept the award for MOAS, it is my great pleasure to invite to the podium Maria Luisa Contrabone, the daughter of Christopher and Regina Contrabone, and the spokesman and ambassador for MOAS, along with partners of MOAS, Tim Crabtree and Nico Perni. to represent my family and our organization. Moaz is honored to receive such a prestigious acknowledgement of our mission through the acceptance of this Freedom Award from the Atlantic Council. I would like to thank my parents, Christopher and Gina Catrambone, for pioneering this groundbreaking initiative. The plan was for them to be here tonight, but worsening condition at sea and increased pressure on our team has led them to return to the ship to support our incredible crew in person. On that note, I would like to also thank the MOAS team and crew 
for their ongoing commitment and devotion to saving human lives, as well as our international benefactors, without whose help we could not be out at sea providing assistance to children, women, and men in distress. Migration has always been part of human history. We currently live in a world where 65.6 million people are forcibly displaced. Among them, 22.5 million are refugees and 10 million are stateless, and off are children and minors. This is the defining global humanitarian crisis of my generation, and our response to it as an international community will be remembered throughout history. Migration affects our daily lives and has a different impact according to our own country of origin, but it is a phenomenon can, can, that cannot be denied, no matter where you live. I myself grew up on the shores of the Mediterranean. For me, this year has always been a happy place, a background for a family, holidays, boat trips with, with friends, and just happy memories. However, as I grew older, I began to realize that this idyllic sea that I called home had been for many years the backdrop for one of the most devastating humanitarian crises in human history. I found it frustrating and deeply saddening that our own communities were not fully aware of what was happening, and that many who were aware were unwilling to acknowledge it, and it hung over communities of the Mediterranean like a hidden truth. In 2013, my parents went sailing with friends, and so I wore a jacket flowing in the water, and that was a tangible evidence of this human tragedy. Months later, over 360 people died just off the coast of Lampedusa. And this was our reality check. Every year since then, thousands have died attempting the crossing. And for my family, it was unthinkable to sit by and watch our Mediterranean be redefined as the graveyard of Europe. We believe deeply that no one deserves to die at sea. And we were willing as a family to invest our resources, our time, and our energy into creating a new model to mitigate the devastating loss of lives that we were witnessing. And this is what it has inspired my parents' decision to buy MOAS, the MOAS vessel, the Phoenix, and start the first ever civil society search and rescue charity in the Mediterranean. As well as saving lives, we also wanted to shift the focus from the land to the sea. I am from a generation who has seen the power of civil society in changing the, the narratives to affect real political change. And this was a fundamental part of our plan. Since our very first mission, the MOAS team has saved and assisted over 39,000 people. And we have been the pioneers for many organizations that followed in our footsteps. However, we cannot stand by and watch anymore. We cannot turn our heads and pretend that this humanitarian crisis is not affecting us, because it is. Today we're here because in the face of apathy and inaction, we lead a community that continues to choose courage over fear. Thank you all for this incredible honor tonight. We are very grateful and MOAS for the work that has been recognized and the acknowledgement of the importance of those life-saving initiatives. So thank you.